Hello, in this video, we're going to discuss the mean value theorem for integrals and how it relates to something called the average value of a function over an interval, because it's really interesting. And then we're going to do an example and actually apply it so you can see what it means intuitively and learn how to use the formula. So the mean value theorem for integrals says, if f is continuous, on the closed interval a comma b, then there exists a number c in the closed interval a b such that, st means such that, the following occurs. The definite integral from a to b of f of x with respect to x is equal to f of c times b minus a. So this is an existence theorem. It basically tells you if you have a continuous function on a closed interval, then we can find some number c in the closed interval such that this equation is true. Um, so there could be more than one number, and actually in the example we're going to do, there's going to be two possible numbers. And something needs to be said about that. When you're doing actual problems, like homework problems or practice problems, sometimes you get more than one answer. You always want to make sure your answers are between um, the numbers you're given here. So you want to make sure your answers are in the given interval. So what does this mean uh, graphically? This is the coolest part. So here's the y-axis, and here's the x-axis. So x and y. And let's just say that this is a, and let's just say that this is b. And let's pretend that f looks something, um, I don't know, like this. Okay, so let's think about, in this particular case, if this is the graph of f, what does this mean? Well, the definite integral from a to b of f of x with respect to x would be this shaded region here. It would be the area under the graph in this particular case. So this area here, so area under f, is equal to the definite integral from a to b of f of x with respect to x. Let me not put the f there because uh, it might seem like I'm saying f is equal to all that. So the area under f is equal to this uh, definite integral. Okay, so all of this area is actually equal to this. Using calculus, it's, it's really cool. Okay, now check this out. There's something um, else we can do here. f of c is equal to 1 over b minus a times the definite integral from a to b of f of x with respect to x. So if you've taken calculus, you might know that this is also defined as f sub a b e, which is called the average value of a function. So this is the average value of f over or on the interval a b. So what is the significance here? Well, the mean value theorem says we can find some number c such that f of c is equal to the average value, right? So what does that mean? So I don't know what c is in this problem, but let's just pretend it's here. So if you have c here, this would mean that this here is f of c. So what does that mean? That means that if you draw a rectangle, like this, which, which, is, which is, this rectangle is not great. I probably should have put C up here, um, but to pretend the area of this rectangle, because this is B minus A, this is F of C. So this is saying that the area of this rectangle is equal to the area under the curve. And again, my rectangle is not drawn perfectly. I probably should have put C up here. It'd be more believable. Clearly the area under the graph is a little bit more than the area under this rectangle. But the idea is that this is the area under the rectangle. So do another picture here, just to explain it one more time. If you have a function from a to b, like this, and it's continuous, the mean value theorem says that you can find some number c such that the area under the rectangle whose height is c is equal to the area under the curve. 
right? And that's what this says. Area under the rectangle is equal to the area under the curve. So pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. And the height of that rectangle is called the average value. So in this particular case, because the picture is be better here, this is called the average value. It's the height of the rectangle and it's equal to f of c. So the area of this box is equal to the area under this graph. So area of rectangle, area under graph. That's the key point. Uh, and I think that's really cool uh, because it's, it's not something that um, you, know, you see a lot of in math, right? It's just a, it's a very unique thing in calculus, I think, for when people first see it. It's like, whoa, you know, the area of the height of the rectangle uh, is equal to the area under the graph of the function. That, that's really amazing. So let, let's go ahead and do an actual example with numbers so you can see how this works. And for the example, we're just going to pick something really easy. Let's go with like f of x equals x squared and we'll go from negative one to one. And we're just gonna find the average value uh, of this uh, function over this interval. So the question will say find the average value. We're also gonna find C and we'll also draw the corresponding picture so you can see the picture in an actual example. So let's go ahead and work through it. So solution. So the average value of a function is equal to one over P minus A and here we have f of x dx from a to b, right? And this is the same, right? This is the same as what we saw here, right? This is f of c, so we're gonna find c in a minute, okay? So in this particular example, it's really easy. a is negative one and b is one. So this is equal to one over one minus negative one, and we're going from negative one to one. We have f of x dx, so that's gonna be x squared dx. One minus negative one, what's well, one plus one, so it's one over two. So the average value of our function is equal to one over two. I'm going from negative one to one, x squared dx. So now we have to integrate this. We're gonna use something called the power rules. The power rule basically says uh, when you have x to a power, as long as that power is not negative one, you can just add one to the exponent and divide. So this is equal to one half, x cubed over three. I love the sound of a sharp pencil. I love the smell too, negative one to one. Let's go ahead and multiply these numbers out or through. So this is one over six, x cubed, negative one to one. It's the average value of our function. So plugging in the top number first, uh, we're gonna get one sixth one cubed minus, and then negative one cubed. This is one sixth, one, and then negative one to an odd power is always negative one, so it's gonna become one minus negative one. So the average value of our function over the interval negative one to one is gonna be one sixth, one plus one, one sixth times two, so it's one third. So that's our average value, one third. Let's draw the picture. This is a really easy one, so I'll try not to mess it up. Let's see. So here's x, here's y. And it's a parabola, right? So let's say this is one. This is negative one. And then let's say this is one here. So it's gonna look something like this. Right, something like that. Because we're only going from, from negative one to one, right? And the height, is gonna be one in either case. Because when you plug in negative one or one to x squared, it's gonna, you're gonna square it and you're gonna get one. So the height is one. And so the average value was one third. So that's gonna be like right here, okay? So this is the rectangle that we were looking at that I was trying to draw <laughs> when I tried to use a fake example. This is the actual rectangle. And then look, there's a C here and there's, there's, a, there's a value of C here, I'll call this C1. There's a value of here, C2, I'll call it C. So there's two different values of C here, right? So the height, height of the rectangle, oh, this pencil's so sharp, is equal to one third. And that's called the average value. This is the average value. Over negative one, one. So the height of the rectangle is the average value of the function over negative uh, one comma one, right? Really, really cool. All right, so now let's find the value of C. So recall, let me turn the page back over here. When I wrote this down, F of C was equal to this. 
I got this, by the way, by just dividing by b minus a, right? So basically what you do to find the average value is you set your, uh, rather to find your value of c, is you take the average value and you set it equal to f of c. So you take one third and you set it equal to f of c. Well, f of x is x squared, so this is just c squared. And this is pretty easy, right? You take the square root of both sides and you get plus or minus square root of one third. So these are going to be the values of c. This is going to be the square root of one third. This is going to be negative square root of one third. So those are the values of c guaranteed by the mean value theorem. And that's pretty cool. So if you look at, so what does this mean? So if you look at the area under this graph, okay, so I'm going to draw it with vertical lines. Like that. So the area under the graph, right, which is the definite integral from negative 1 to 1 of x squared dx, this is area under x squared from negative 1 to 1, right? This is actually equal to, okay, area of the rectangle. whose height is the average value of x squared over negative 1, 1. So that's, that's the key thing there, right? So, so the area of the rectangle whose height is the average value of the function over negative 1, 1 is equal to the area under the graph. And that's the same thing as the definite integral. So I just think that's so cool. Uh, that I wanted to make this video just to ex try to explain this to people because um, I, I know when I took calculus, I didn't know this stuff, right? So, um, but I thought it would just be really cool to show everyone. Anyways, hopefully uh, you've learned some mathematics in this random math video. As always, keep doing mathematics. Take care.